And here we are with our first carrier update of the day. Let's find out what's going on in freight markets. Good, Donnie, good morning, what do you sir. have for us? So I looked out this morning, looked at this, looked kind of scary this morning. Outbound tender mm -hmm. volume index, blue line. And it just kind of showed a sharp downward curve, but it's only down to 15,369. You mm -hmm. know, we've been up around, you know, in between that, you know, 15, 7, 15, you know, 16,000 mark in there. Yeah. So, it, you know, like, whoa, this looks kind of scary. So let's jump over to the next chart here. I was kind of threw this in, wanted to compare this to our seasonality. And it fits right in. It, so it does. It's, it's, so when you wake up and you look at this and you see it dropping down, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Why? It's part of the seasonality chart. If you look at the seasonality here after, you know, August, September, you know, August and July and August of last year, we had that buildup coming off of the COVID as we reopened. But once you kind of get past September, you see how it's very, very similar. And we're kind of, uh, you know, trending this year, just like we did last year. So that's really what I'm basing it off of. Yeah, it looks like uh, the end of the quarter is, is right here. End of September had the ramp up, your normal ramp up for yep. end of the quarter loads. And then you're going to fall back down a little bit. And then Good the, seasonal pattern. we're getting real close right here to this takeoff here for, you know, the beginning of the retail slash mm -hmm. holiday season. Uh, and we'll get to that on rejection rates as well. We, we, we could be starting on rejection rates. Yeah. Well, let's let's uh, go over to my next chart here, uh, looking at uh, outbound tender rejection rates again. We we see this little dip mm -hmm. back up right here. Now you know what is this? We're at twenty point nine one nine two percent. Now this is drive and reef for everything combined combined all together. But this downward trend here for a second here has stopped. Yep. In previous years, we saw right around October fifteenth is where that you know right around October fifteenth for drive in we see that build back up. Uh, Reefer actually started a little bit earlier in September, but it kind of drops down in October as well and then starts to go back up in November. Yeah, and same seasonal pattern right here. We get up to leading into October. All those loads are going out. Book that revenue for the shippers. Shippers want to get it off their docks. Book that revenue for the quarter, and we're going to go trail down a yeah. little bit. Things are going to calm out rel it's calm, all relative. It's the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm, yep. yes. Let's pop in here to our next chart here. And I like to break this down here. Uh, this is the drive-in uh, outbound tender rejection rates mm -hmm. in blue. And I've compared this to the previous year, 2020. And this right here is what I'm talking about. This date right here is right after the 15th of the month here. And then you see a, a bump and then you see it, it kind of trending up here mm -hmm. as we get towards the end of the year. So we see this etch up right here. It's just, it's just one day, but is that it? Is so it? you need to start monitoring this and see, is this the beginning? Because if this is, you need to start pushing your rates up. You, right now. Yeah, definitely right now. Do you think that we are going to uh, to, to see 25% plus tender rejections going into the fourth quarter this year? Do you think it's going to be even 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 a tighter market? The, or The trend's going to be very close to the same. Mm -hmm. I don't think rejection rates will get quite as high because we almost hit 30% last year. Now, if they miraculously get this port congestion cleared mm -hmm. up, and get the freight off the boats and available to trucking, then we could see a lot of changes in here. But, you know, right now, and we'll talk about this here on, on the next time a little bit, but, you know, right now, they say there's a, they say there's a shortage of truck drivers. Maybe. You go ask the truck drivers, they'll tell you no. You go ask the shippers, they'll tell you yes, there is. And that's relative because the average price per mile right now. Shippers mm -hmm. want to see more truck drivers out there. They want the price down. And the carriers do not want to see more truckers out there because they want to keep the price elevated. So they do, yes. So they, they do. What I'm thinking is we have, what, 70, 80 ships now uh, off the coast. Everything's so delayed now that that's going to be great for trucking because all of that's going to be expedited, which is... Yeah. truckload out instead of the rail, right? The rail is tough. The, the rail's not going to be a handle these if, if, if mm -hmm. they have the deadline. So they're going to be calling and they're going to be expediting, right, and teams. Yep. But the prices in California are going to have to change because right now there's, a, there's, a, there's not near enough east to, west, east to west freight right now to cover all that if it starts to come in. On these ships out there, mm -hmm. they're estimating 500,000 containers. That's a lot of trucks. That's a lot of trains. And it it's is. not going to come in all at once, obviously. But once that once the floodgates start to open, they're going to be calling on the truckers to get in there. And it's it's going to be tight because California's got a, not, a lot of new laws that are in place. You can't go in there with a truck that's earlier than 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had the the AV5, so that's going to hurt. You know, where the owner operators can go in there. 
So there's, there, there's going to be some issues there if this all gets open. But currently right now, I've been watching a lot of social media on this. Mm -hmm. It's not a shortage at the, at, the, at the ports. You see trucks lined up, pair by yeah. pair, power only. In, in the background, you see chassis stacked up. Now, what I don't know is are those chassis owned by somebody personally? Is mm -hmm. it owned by the port? I don't know who owns those chassis, but there are chassis there in the background. And then, of course, CNN showed the exits of the ports yesterday, and there was no lines. Of so course it's, it's, it's getting them yep. unloaded. So we'll get back to that here in a little bit.